Santana's First Nighter Program. From the Little Theater of Times Square. Starring Olin Soule and Barbara Luddy, with an all-star cast presented by Campana, the quality name in cosmetics. Theater Time, Broadway. And on this New Year's night, a new play makes its bow to the public from the stage of the Little Theater of Times Square. It's an exciting event, because hosts of celebrities always attend these opening nights on the Great White Way. And to be sure that you miss none of the fun... Here's your host for the evening, the genial first-nighter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted that you can join our party. The theater is just a few blocks away, and here's my cab. Shall we start? All right, driver, to the little theater, please. Up Broadway, across 42nd Street. Here was the scene last night of one of the greatest New Year's Eve celebrations in history. The crowd were thick in Times Square, and tonight it's by no means deserted. Just ahead now is the Little Theater. My gracious, that girl must have a magic touch. She's surrounded by photographers. I understand we'll all have a magic touch next week. Have your tickets ready, please. Have your tickets ready, please. Good evening, Mr. First Nighter. The usher will show you to your seats. Thank you. We'll go right in. Well, ladies and gentlemen... We're in our seats, and I must say as I look over the audience that every woman here tonight must have the magic touch. I never saw so much beauty. But tonight's play is a comedy romance called The One in the Middle, written by Virginia Safford Lynn and co-starring Olin Soule and Barbara Luddy. That sounds like just what the doctor should order for New Year's night, a chance to relax and laugh. Mr. Soule, I see by the program, is to play the part of Peter Randolph, a recently returned vet. Miss Luddy is cast as Franny, a young lady tentatively engaged in the pursuit of higher education. And what an all-star supporting cast, including B. Benaderet as Tabby Randolph, Peter's sister, Sandra Gould as Maudie, Jane Webb as Jean, and other famous names. But now, before first curtain, let's listen to Frank Worth and his First Nighter Orchestra. Have you heard about Magic Touch? There's the signal for first curtain, the house lights are out, and here's the play. Come in. I haven't got an apple, but may I come in anyway, teacher? For mercy's sake, <laughs> Peter! Oh, says, how are you? Oh, mm-hmm. darling, Peter! I didn't expect you until next week. Well, my discharge came through sooner than I expected. Oh, let me see how you look. Hmm? Oh, you still look that way. Oh, stop. <laughs> Listen, Tabby, could you put me up here at the school for a while? Well, uh, I could put you in the assistant principal's room down the hall. Mm-hmm. Come on, bring your suitcase. He's left and we haven't got a new one yet. Ah, oh, good old sis. <laughs> Well, see, it's really a nice room. Mm Mm-hmm. Lap of luxury, no less. Say so. (laughs) Great Scott. Sound general quarters. What's that? The young ladies returning from their daily constitutional. Golly, we're going to go. I'll protect you. (laughs) Young ladies, less noise, if you please. Yes, Mr. Randolph. Oh, uh, girls, one moment. I believe this would be an opportune time for you to meet my brother, Peter Randolph. Oh, young ladies, where are your manners? How do you do, Mr. Randolph? Well, uh, how do you do, uh, young ladies? Oh, Mr. Randolph, it'll be wonderful having you here with us. Oh, it really will. It's our first real break since they put in electrical refrigeration at the ice bad stop club of things. Well, thank you, I think. Mr. Randolph, astronomy is my most favorite subject. Well, thank you for telling me. Oh, thank you for listening. Uh-huh. Young ladies, kindly proceed to your rooms, if you please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Goodbye, Mr. Randolph. Goodbye, goodbye. For the love of heaven, Tabby, get inside here quick. They might get loose again. (laughs) Peter, do you know what they think? No, and don't tell me. The assistant principal always teaches astronomy. And all I can say is, heaven help him, whoever he's going to be. Peter, dear, I've got news. He's going to be you. Well, that's very nice. Hey, wait a minute. Yes, Peter. No, Tabby. Peter... I didn't write you about this, but the school's really on the rocks. Well, how could it be with all those girls? 
Well, most of the 50 aren't coming back next semester. They're very bored. Peter, you'll have to face it. You are the Navy's gift to the Randolph Seminary for young ladies. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. Tabby, you're a very nice sister, and I'm extremely fond of you. But you're not that nice, and I'm not that fond. Now, this is your classroom, Peter. But, Tabby, I don't know anything about astronomy. Neither do they, so you'll start even. Uh, you're asking one poor lone guy to face 50 girls. Oh, only two of the girls take astronomy. Only two? Then why do you have the subject? Well, because I think everyone should know astronomy. It's, it's very broadening. Uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, jumping, Jupiter. Man the lifeboats. Oh, for mercy's sakes, the entire school now takes astronomy. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, students. Well, I'll uh, leave you to your work. And you've certainly got it. Hey, hey, Tabby, wait, listen. Uh, <clears throat> uh, young ladies. Thank you. Uh, as you know, we are gathered together here to find out all about the uh, romance of the stars. Mr. Randolph, my favorite star is Ronald Coleman. Oh, really? Mine's Claudette Colbert. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, class will come to order, please. Are there any questions? Yes, Miss... Uh... Uh, Francis Emerson, but everyone calls me Franny, and I do hope that you will, too, Mr. Randolph. Thank you very much. You have a question, Franny? No, thank you, but I'm sure I will have later. Uh... <clears throat> well, now, do we have any textbooks or star maps around here? My name's Jean Taylor, and the books are on your desk. My name's Marty Dexter, and there's a star map in back of you. Well, what do you know? My, just look at all these stars. Now, who can tell me the names of all these stars? Uh, well, on to the next exercise. <laughs> now, uh, here's an attractive-looking uh, constellation or something. Uh, Mr. Randall, could that possibly be the Big Dipper? Why, Franny, that's very clever of you, because it is the Big Dipper, I think. And in military circles, they call it Ursa Major. <laughs> oh, come now, it wasn't that far. Now, if you'll all please look at the star map. Over here, we have, uh, uh, at the map, girls, please. Mr. Randolph, don't you think the moon's at its best in a canoe on a summer night? <laughs> well, uh, personally, I never knew they could get the moon into a canoe. <laughs> Now we'll move on to the subject of eclipses. Now this is caused by the sun getting in the way of the, uh, uh, or rather the uh, moon gets between the, uh, well, suppose we put it this way. When the moon and the sun and the earth, and so you have the planets, if anyone wants them. And now, <clears throat> let us take a quick peek at meteors. When the, uh, who's doing the whispering back there? Franny, is that a note you have in your hand? Well, I, I, I... What did you say, Mr. Randolph? I can't have that sort of thing going on in my classroom, you know. Francis Emerson, bring that note to teacher at once. Yes, Mr. Uh, Randolph. Here. Yes, thank you. Now, much as I dislike doing this, I shall have to make an example of you, Franny. The note reads as follows. Dear Morty, hasn't he the darlingest wave in his hair? <laughs> <laughs> you may return to your seat, Miss Emerson. Yes, Mr. Randolph. Now, here we have a very interesting picture of the sun. Now, let's see what the caption says beneath it. Well, it says the sun. <laughs> <laughs> what are those bells that keep ringing? They're the bells for all our other classes, Mr. Randolph. Oh, well, class dismissed. <laughs> hey, girls. Hey, listen, girls. <laughs> hey! Young ladies, proceed at once to your other classes. Oh, yes, Miss Randolph. Goodbye, Mr. Randolph. Come on, girls. Apparently, your astronomy class was a howling success. All three hours of it. <clears throat> they... Well, Peter. Peter, are you all right? No, no, but it's nothing that a few weeks in a psychopathic ward won't cure. The curtain comes down on the first act of tonight's play in the little theater off Times Square. Smoking in the outer lobby or downstairs only. Listen next week for news about magic touch. All right, now I see someone stealthily approaching. And as I live, it's Larry Keating. Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. 
And what better time than New Year's night for you ladies to make some beauty resolutions? For example, be it resolved... That tomorrow, the first shopping day of the new year, I shall get what so many women say is the finest hand lotion they've ever used. Famous Italian bomb. Yes, your old friend Italian bomb is back again after its absence during the war. So, be it resolved... That in this winter of 1948... I shall protect my skin against wintertime dryness and chapping by using rich, concentrated Italian balm, the famous wintertime lotion that originated years ago in cold Canada. It's so different from thin, watery lotions. It gives such extra good protection. And ladies, why not protect your pocketbook while you protect the beauty of your hands? For instance, be it resolved... That I shall save money by buying Italian Balm, the famous hand lotion that sells today at exactly its pre-war price. Yes, ladies, good, dependable Italian Balm offers you the same pre-war quality, same pre-war quantity, same pre-war price. Start using this famous cold-weather lotion tomorrow and see how truly soft and smooth your hands can be all winter long. You'll learn about Magic Touch next week. The first nighters are hurrying down the aisles to their seats. The lights are dimmed, and here's the second act of The One in the Middle. Oh, Mr. Randolph, could I speak to you a minute? Why, yes, Miss uh, uh, Franny. Well, I, I just wanted to say I'm awfully embarrassed about that note I wrote in class today. You're embarrassed? Franny, could we please just forget it ever happened? Oh, I think it's awfully nice of you to take that attitude, Mr. Randolph. Yes, as a matter of fact, it is very nice of me. I should make you stand in a corner for five minutes. And, come to think of it, you look rather cute standing in a corner. Why, Mr. Randolph, what do you mean? I have no idea. Let's just forget about that, too, shall we? Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to see my sister about something very important, I'm sure. Oh, I didn't mean to disturb you, Mr. Randolph. I haven't disturbed you, have I, Mr. Randolph? Franny, I'm very sorry, but you haven't disturbed me in the least. Oh. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Randolph. Goodbye, Franny. Well, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, then, Franny. Oh, excuse me, girls. Could I get through here, please? Pardon me, will you let me pass? Excuse me, could I open the door? Tabby, what in thunder is that lineup outside your door? Oh, isn't it splendid? All 50 girls are signing up for next semester. Mm. You may now start shopping around for a new assistant principal. Oh, but, Peter, you can't go till next semester. The girls might change their minds. Oh. Well, just how soon does the next semester start? Why, in no time at all. Just eight weeks from the middle of next month. Oh, Tabby. Oh, no. must be losing our grip. We've worked on him now for three weeks. I think he likes the type of girl who could be a real pal to him. Oh, Gene, I think he prefers a cuddly type. I really do. Pete, uh, Mr. Randolph, prefers the romantic, poetic type. And remember this, girls, as soon as he definitely shows which one he's really interested in, the rest have to lay off and give me a clear field. <laughs> Hi there, Mr. Randolph. Oh, hello, Jean. Isn't it a swell day? I'll bet you're dying for a game of tennis. Of course, with the right partner. I mean, the kind of girl who's nuts about outdoor life and who can play golf and ride and hike, even with a cold. Jean, would you care to wrestle? Why, yet. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Randolph, where are you going? Pardon me while I dash out and rip off a couple of hundred-yard sprints. Oh, Mr. Randolph. <laughs> Mr. Randolph. No, Marty. No, now you know the rules. No staying after class. But I didn't understand one single thing you told us about astronomy today. Really, I didn't. Well, that's okay. I didn't either. <laughs> well, I don't think you realize what a helpless little thing I am. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Isn't it awful? It's a shame. 
<laughs> and now, if you'll excuse me, I have an engagement with a moon about a dog star. Yes, just a second. Why, good evening, Franny. Good evening, Mr. Randolph. Oh, could you please come out on the balcony quick? Why, what's happened to it? Come on, hurry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, open the door quick. Yeah, yeah. Come on, quick. Uh -huh. Look, j just just look, Mr. Randolph. Yeah, where, where, where? Uh, up there in the sky, the Big Dipper. What's it doing? It's the very same one you've been telling us about all these weeks. Well, just think of that. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the treat. Now, shall we go back inside, Franny? Isn't it a beautiful night? You know, some people think that you can see stars reflected in other people's eyes. Can you see stars reflected in my eyes, Mr. Randolph? Well, there seems to be something there, all right. Well, let me see if they're reflected in your eyes, too. No, no, mine never reflect. But... Never. Oh, Mr. Randolph, you've made me so aware of the vastness of eternity. Somehow there's such an awful lot of eternity. It's all so sweet and brief and fleeting. You are so right. Here today, gone tomorrow, like... Isn't it true? The bird of time has but a little way to flutter. Yeah. And this bird is on the wing. But, Mr. Randolph... Oh, dear. Well, thank heaven, that's my last class for today. Got anything to eat, Fred? Oh, cheese and crackers. Give me. Say, Jean, do you know that the cook is making a coconut cake because she's found out he loves coconut cake even though it always makes him sick? Oh, then we could nurse him. Somehow, somehow we three don't seem to be getting anywhere. Well, maybe he's fallen for one of us and is hiding it bravely. Certainly. Why, I can sense it every time he looks at me. Gee, when he looks at me, I don't sense anything. <laughs> and, 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 and the tone of his voice when he speaks to me. The touch of his hand. Wait a minute. When did he ever touch your hand, Freddy? Wednesday morning at 10.33. I was erasing the blackboard and asked him to help me lift the eraser. <laughs> Are you trying to tell us that he's fallen for you? All right, I'll prove it. This time of afternoon, he always goes for a stroll. When he opens the front door, the three of us will be standing there. And remember, girls, you're on your own. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Mr. Randolph. Hello there, Mr. Randolph. Hello, Peter. Uh, going somewhere, girls? Yes, I'm going up that way. And I'm going down this way. I'm going over that way. Which way are you going, Mr. Randolph? Uh, well, I, uh... Sorry to keep you waiting, Peter. Oh, good afternoon, girls. Oh, good, good afternoon, afternoon, Mr. Mr. Randolph. Randolph. My uh, brother and I are on our way to the post office. Won't you join us? Uh, thank you very much, but... But... Come on, girls. Goodbye, girls. Here, Tabby, here. Let me take the package. Thanks. Peter, hmm? somehow things don't seem to be working out quite as I'd intended. Uh, my idea was to put the school back on its feet, not demoralize it. Uh, if you really want to leave before next semester... Oh, it'll... there's no special rush. Oh. Now, don't tell me you're getting interested in one of these girls. Okay, then I won't tell you. Peter, if I hadn't come along just then, which way would you have gone? Why, without a moment's hesitation, I'd have gone looking for you. Marty, give me some cookies. You know, we've still got to find out which one of us it is. If we could only all be in some kind of danger, then he'd rescue one of us. Then we'd know... Or at least the rest of you would. Maybe we could sort of get in a rowboat and drown. Uh, just kind of, I mean. How about a runaway horse with all 50 of us on its back? <laughs> oh, wait, listen. He's coming down the hall. I know his step. Quick, open the door a crack. Open wider, Jean. I can't see. Oh, doesn't he look darling? Oh, he's wearing that sweet blue bow polka dot tie again. Girls, I've, I've, just had, I've just had a perfectly wonderful idea. Well, wait a second till I have one more look. Oh, my. Okay. Close the door and come here. 
Now listen, here's my idea. And the curtain comes down on the second act of tonight's play in the Little Theater of Times Square. Smoking downstairs or in the outer lobby only, please. Come again next week, ladies, and hear all about the magic touch. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me bring you in person, Larry Keating. Ladies, why are your hands so dry tonight, so rough and scratchy? Because in winter, the dry indoors air and cold, dry outdoors air and wintry winds all combine to rob my skin of its natural moisture every minute of the day. Right. And what is the best thing, do you think, for that? Well, thousands like myself say, Italian balm. This famous lotion puts back moisture into my skin, helps it keep soft and smooth, does it so quickly, too. The minute Italian balm touches my skin, it feels smooth, more velvety. The action is almost immediate. Have you ever found a lotion that equaled Italian balm in caring for the skin in wintertime? The answer that thousands of women would give to that question is, no, I haven't. Because Italian balm will keep hands free of dryness and chapping, no matter what happens in the way of housework or weather. Yes, Italian balm is a sturdy protector against dryness and chapping. It was born and reared in Canada, North America's coldest climate. Its success there brought it to the United States. And since the day it crossed the border, so many women have said... The Italian balm never fails me. It has a quality and richness that my skin seems to need when winter comes. The first nighters are all in their seats, ready for the last act. And there goes the curtain. Peter, come here into my office. I want to show you something. Okay, then I'm going to bed. What do you want to show me? These exam papers from various classes. Peter, did you know an hypotenuse equals the distance between Venus and Mars? <laughs> or um, that the Celts were driven into Wales and Cornwall by a shooting star? Or uh, that the recipe for muffins is two cups of flour to one half cup of Milky Way. <laughs> when are you leaving, Peter? Yes, I see what you mean. Well, after all, they are just kids. Oh, yes. Children of 17, 18, and 19. Uh, mere babes. Hmm. Isn't it odd how fond you've become of teaching? Uh, Peter, just between us girls, which one is it? Which one? Why, the one in the middle. All right, then, don't tell me. But let me warn you, if you ever single out one girl, it'll probably lead to mass suicide. Shh, now, 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 be quiet, girls. And, and stand back so I can open the furnace door. Give me the rags and stuff, Jim. Well, wait a second, Fred. Put just a little more oil on them. Oh. oh, wouldn't it be awful if the register in his room wasn't open? Don't worry. I went in and opened it wide while he was in Miss Randolph's office. You better give me the matches, Jean. Here. This is going to make lots and lots of lovely smoke. <coughs> I'll say it does. Close the furnace door, Fred. Now, let's get back upstairs. Maudie, you and Jean go to your rooms and stay there. Then when Peter comes to rescue me, keep out of his way. Well, I think you'll come to rescue me. I really do. Let the poor girl dream. I'll be the one who'll tell you girls what it was like. Girls, into the halls. Line up, girls. Maudie, come out of your room. Oh, but Miss Rand. Line up, girls. It's just like fire drill. Jean, come out here at once. But Miss Rand. Line up. Franny, come out into the hall or must I drag you? Oh, but Miss Rand. All right now, girls, march. One, two, one, two. Keep your head, girls. Stand on. One, two, one, two. Is everyone accounted for? Is everyone out of the building? Yes, Miss Randolph. We're all out here. Doggone it. The fire department will have everything under control in just a moment. Now, everyone stay right here on the lawn. Oh, how could she be so mean? She personally rescued every single girl. What a dirty trick. Yes. She spoiled everything. She really did. Girls, where is he? Uh, Miss Randolph, where's your brother? Peter? Mm. Well, isn't Peter here? Peter, are you here? Peter! He's been overcome by smoke. He's trapped in his room. Get out of my way, girls. I'm going to save him. Freddy, come back. I'll save him. Girls, girls, wait for me. I'll save him. Really, I'll save him. Girls, girls, come back here. There he 
is still in bed, overcome with smoke. Quick, Jean, you take his feet. You take his feet. I'll take his head. Doesn't he look darling in pink and blue stripes? Uh, I'm going to get his other shoulder. Now, all together, lift up. Isn't he wonderful and heavy? Hey, 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 what's going on? Oh, girls, go away. Don't be frightened, Peter. We're saving you. For what? You've been overcome by smoke. What smoke? Smoke from the... Oh, there isn't any smoke in here. Oh, Peter, how could you? You close your register. Oh. 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 Well, don't just stand there. Somebody pick me up. Young ladies, I've called you all here to the assembly room this morning in reference to the most regrettable occurrence of last night. The identity of the three girls involved is known to me. Naturally, they should be expelled. However, I'm willing to be lenient on one condition. The ringleader of these three must confess. Oh, now, Tabby, listen. Sit down, Peter. Uh, well, young ladies, I'm waiting. I did it, Miss Randolph. Really, I did. Oh, no, Miss Randolph. I am the guilty one. Oh, no, wait. I'm the one, Miss Randolph. It was my idea. Yes, Franny, I know it was. Come up here, please. You are to make a public apology to the entire school, my brother and me. Yes, Miss Randall. I... I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Franny. You may now return to your seat. Yes, Miss Randall. <laughs> now, I have an announcement. My brother Peter is leaving us this morning, and I might add that he's doing so at my personal invitation. Oh. There will be no demonstration, if you please. After all, I can't have the school burning down every night. Now, Peter, you may make a brief valedictory address, if you like. Thank you, Tabby. Uh, <clears throat> Young ladies, what I have to say can be summed up in one word. Goodbye. <laughs> I wish I could say it to each of you individually, but time does not allow. So will one of you girls act as the school's representative? How about you there? Me? No, no, the one in the middle. Will you come up here a moment, please? That's the girl. Yes, Mr. Randall. Stand right there in front of me, please. Raise your head. Now say prunes. Prunes. Mm. <gasps> Peter! Peter! Oh, my. <laughs> oh, oh, how could you? Hey, Franny, here, wait, Franny, wait a second. Peter, you come straight back here. Peter! Franny, Franny, where are you? Franny? No. Ah, the balcony. <laughs> Hello, Juliet. You go away. Wasn't I humiliated enough without your kissing me? Well, I just thought everyone should know which one it is, and has been all the time. You really mean... Oh, no, you're just saying that. Ah. <laughs> Darling, come here. Oh, no, now wait. Pl oh, please. Oh, Peter. Mm. Mm -hmm. Strawberry. I <laughs> oh, funny, sweet little thing. Well, that's that, I guess. Oh, wasn't it beautiful the way he said, oh, mm, strawberry. <laughs> Come on, Marty. That's all there is. Here. I'll give you half his blue polka dot tie. The curtain is gone, ladies and gentlemen, on the final act of a new play. Next week, the Little Theater off Times Square will present another new play entitled Help Wanted Female. It's packed with suspense and intrigue. Be sure to join us next week at this same time. And ladies, the good news is coming. When you tune in next week, you'll hear about Magic Touch. And from that time on, you can have a Magic Touch at your fingertips. And now we move out of the theater and into the street. If you can, Mr. First Matter. Thank you. And Happy New Year. Campana's first night of program, starring Barbara Luddy and Olin Soule, is a copyrighted radio feature. Tonight's play was pure fiction and did not refer to real people or actual events. Mmm, 
That is entrancing. You mean my perfume? Yes, indeed. That's very special. Very new. Very lovely. It's called Cotton Blossom, an exquisite fragrance by Old South Toiletries. Cotton Blossom. I'll remember that. You can get it at better stores. Just ask for Cotton Blossom by Old South. The First Sighter program came to you over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>